Hello and welcome to the Quick Terrain Modeler tutorials. In this video, we will cover data management, including topics such as indexing and cache files. We'll show you best practices for organizing large data holdings, creating cache files, sharing those files, and how to keep them up to date. Also, how to create index files and view them in Google Earth. So let's get started. Managing data, especially when you are not the owner of the data, can be a difficult task. As part of a planning sale, you may not even know what data you have or even where exactly it is stored. Fortunately, QT Modeler can simplify these tasks by following a few best practices I am about to show you. This tutorial will dovetail with two of our other general interest tutorials, the first one entitled Indexing and the second Finding Indexing and Caching. However, it will expand those topics to explain how to use those files you create as part of a planning cell or team when you may or may not be connected to a network. Some of the procedures explained in this tutorial may require some help from your IT department, especially when network drives and shares are involved. Additionally, it is assumed you have Google Earth installed on your computer. I'd like to clarify the difference between an index file and a search cache. A search cache is to QT modeler data what a phone book is to people and their contact information. Imagine if people's phone numbers were stored in a phone book in no logical order and you wanted to find a particular person. You would have no choice but to start down the list and check each and every name on every page until you found the one you were looking for. It would take hours. This is true for computer data also, even though computers can speed the basic search process. A search cache still cuts the time drastically to find the data you need. As for an index file, now imagine if you had a city map and instead of simply showing streets and typical map things, it displayed the name of the people at the physical location of their house on the map so you could simply look at an area on the map and see who lives there. This is what the index file does for the 2D and 3D data in Qt Modeler. This file can be in a Google Earth specific file format or in a shape file format for display in other graphical programs. In the first example, I will address how to index and catalog the data stored directly on your computer before you start the planning process so that you are ready when the time comes to search and use data for a specific location or set of coordinates. But at this point, you'll have to ask yourself, for this computer, is this data that I'm about to index updated regularly or is it relatively static? Meaning, is it part of a base load that stays the same and is rarely updated? It's important to know this because much like the phone book, a new search cache and index file has to be created each time the data it contains changes. While not that difficult to do, you run the risk of using stale cache and index files if the data was updated without you knowing and updating the associated index and cache files. So some thought has to be given as to which drives and folders to index. Typical DoD planning computers separate 2D and 3D data, such as maps, imagery, and elevation data, into partition drives or in separate top-level directories. This makes it easy for the IT folks to update it, but not necessarily easy for users to find it when using programs other than those the directories were designed for. The good news is that Qt Modeler can simplify the search process by creating an index file and search cache. If you are acquiring new data for a specific mission, it's best to store it outside the index location until such time when you have time to move it into the proper file structure and re-index. To create both an index file and a search cache, open Qt Modeler and select Create Index File from the Export menu. You can also use the Create KML Index icon next to the Find Model icon on the default or tactical toolbars. Once open, the file types to include are automatically all selected. On the left, click on Select Folder to Index and browse to the drive or folder you want to index. It's best to index the entire drive if you know the data on that drive will not change frequently. Be sure to check the Recursive Subfolders box if you want all subdirectories to be included, which is normally the case. If you desire to create a Google Earth specific file, select the Create KMZ Index file and browse to the folder location where you want the Google index file to be stored and name the file. This is also the default location for the cache file you generate by checking the box next to Generate Search Cache in the bottom left of the window. If no KMZ is selected for creation, 
the search cache file will be stored in the shape index file location. Next, if you also want a shape file, select the create shape index file and browse to where you want to store those files. Remember, a shape file can be a group of files depending on the file type you select when naming the file. ESRI shape files can be for individual files and KML and CSV files are single files. Once you hit the go button, the process will begin. The time it takes depends on several factors, but on an internal drive, you can estimate roughly 5 minutes per terabyte, indexing approximately 25,000 files. In the indexing window, you will see the progress bar and below the number of files searched, good files, unregistered files, bad files, and error files. If there are any bad or error files, a report will be produced and open automatically at the end, telling you which files are bad or produce the error. Lastly, if a KMZ file was produced, and Google Earth is installed on your computer, it will open with your file displayed. Once the indexing and search cache creation is complete, you are ready to use them. The search cache is used when searching for data with the model search tool. Simply select cache in the define media to search section instead of a directory. The search will be very quick and will open the desired file or files from their stored location. One thing to note is that when you created the cache and index files, QTM catalogs all compatible data, including 3D surface data, such as DEMS and DTED, 3D point data, such as point clouds and last files, 2D raster data, such as maps and imagery, and vector data, such as lines and points. So no matter what query you run on the cache file, it will return all QTM compatible files in your index location. If you want to use Google Earth to visually search for files, simply navigate to your area of interest, turn on the desired folder in the places tree you wish to see, and observe which files are available. Next, zoom in on your area of interest and select the icon in the center of the outline file to open information about the file along with a hyperlink that can be used to launch QT Modeler with that file open. Make sure to turn on the Allow Access to Local Files and Personal Data in the options of Google Earth. This is required to use hyperlinks to launch QT Modeler from within Google Earth. Returning to QT Modeler, you'll notice that you can create a search cache directly from the model search window by simply selecting the directory to be cached and hitting the Generate Search Cache button. This is useful if you do not need an index file or a shape file, as it will only create the search cache file. The cache file is then stored in the top level directory of the reference directory and default name to qt underscore search underscore cache dot qch, unless of course you elect to change it. In the second example, I'll explain what to do when you are sharing data across a network and you want to catalog the data on a specific share or network drive. This is where you may have to involve your IT folks if your computer is not set up correctly. The best practice for shared data, especially when working in a planning cell or team environment, is to assign someone who has insight as to when the data holdings are updated or modified to create and update the cache and index files. This eliminates the need for everyone using that data to do it themselves, especially when they do not know if the data holdings have changed. The cache and index files can be left on the top level directory of the share or network drive where everyone can access them. The most common issue is when using uniform naming convention paths versus map drives, whereas the creator of the cache or index file has that computer, share, or network drive mapped to P drive, for example, but your computer was set up to access it as Q drive or by the network UNC path directly. This is an issue because although you are using the cache file located directly on the indexed location, once you try to load the files you found in the model search window, QT Modeler will not be able to find the actual files. The fix for this issue is several fold. You can ensure all computers using the cache and index files are set up the same, meaning all map locations have the same letter. You can use the UNC pass or create your own cache and index files. Of course, the latter defeats the luxury of someone else maintaining them for you. Contact your IT folks if you run into issues. One last example that causes similar concerns 
and maybe more common, is when you're handed a huge external drive with two terabytes or more of data on it. Of course, you'll want to immediately connect it to your computer and catalog it to see what you have, but just like the network problems, sometimes when you connect it to your computer via USB or eSATA, it may have a different drive letter. This is not only an issue for you, but everyone you share it with, especially if your computer is offline when someone else needs access to the data. Again, your IT folks are best at coming up with a solution for your particular situation, but as it relates to shared cache and index files, just be aware of these considerations. This has been a brief overview of indexing and search caches, two tools that can speed up the planning process by reducing the time spent searching for data and increase the time you have to analyze your mission. Be sure to check out our other tutorials on our website and please contact us if you have any questions.